How are you guys? I hope you're all safe during COVID. Today I'm going to go through a complete beginner's guitar lesson. If you're absolutely new to the guitar, do not worry about it. Don't be intimidated. I know it can be very, very scary at times to learn an instrument. You feel as though you're going to ask a stupid question of some sort. Don't worry. I'm going to take you through your first chords. I'm going to take you through your first song. We'll do it step by step. I'll take you through the strings and the tuning. It's all good. The tuning being E, A, D, G, B, E. The mnemonic phrase I used to remember that is Every Alsatian dog grows big ears. Uh, another one I came across is Eddie Eight Dynamite, Goodbye Eddie. But the thing with mnemonic phrases, as an interesting side note, I've found that if you, apparently, if you come up with your own, you're more likely to remember them. But uh, if you can't be bothered with that, that's the one I use. Every Alsatian dog grows big ears. Okay, now this is a very, very daunting part for a lot of people, but it is nothing to worry about. Like everything else, if you keep practicing, you will get good at it. And I'm living testament to that, tuning your guitar. So I will start right at the beginning. These things are called machine heads, also known as tuners. And as you can see, I've got three on each side of the headstock, which is this big thing. Some guitars have all six on one side. It doesn't matter. If you can tune one, you can learn to tune the others. Even then, if you can tune one, you can tune the others. It is that simple. So what I've purposefully done is I've knocked all six strings out of tune. Here's a G chord. Sounds very, very horrible right now. And I'm just going to adjust this so that you guys can see it. And I'm going to start on the high... It, do you know what? I'm going to start on the low E because that will be this headstock now. Also important note, I wind up the strings. I'm going to do a separate video for restringing a guitar because that's something that deserves its own video because it. Uh, I'm going to go into a bit of detail there. This is for the low E. Uh, low E, A and D. And these are wound counterclockwise. And with these high three machine heads, for the high three strings, these are wound clockwise. Okay. And so... I'm going to start with the low E, and it's so out of tune, it's registering as D-sharp. So we're a half step lower than we should be. If I spin this towards myself, or away from myself, I beg your pardon. If I spin this away from myself, it goes up. And we want it to be, you can just make out a, an upside down, a big black upside down triangle in the center, just below where it says 440, which is the hertz we register and tune to, for those of you interested. And I'm going to try and get this in the middle there. Okay. The next one is A, and that is a half step higher than we need to be because that's registering as A sharp, which is good because I'm going to go the other way, I'm going to go down. If I spin it towards myself, it's going down. And I'm going to get it right there in the center. And there we go. Next one is D, and what's this register? This one, oh, so this is, why is this? A bit lower, I'm spinning away from myself. So we're raising it, you can hear it go up, going down. There we go, and that's in the center. And now here we get to the high three strings here. So this one here is G, next one along. And how's that doing? That is a little, flat. You tend to say flat if it's lower and sharp if it's higher. So in this case, because it's lower than where we want to be, which is G, it's flat. And there we go. There we go, right in the center. Ah, and this is A sharp, so this is a bit lower. We want that to be right. Now notice here, with the higher strings, I don't need to bend for as much. I don't need to bend the tuner as much for it to go a bit out of tune. I just add that little spin and it goes from A sharp to B. <laughs> so just consider that with the higher strings in particular. The lower strings, the thicker strings, take a bit more turning because they're thicker. They're, I imagine it's because they're thicker they've got a heavier material on them and such. And here's the high E, it's a little bit flat. And I'm gonna get that right in there. And there we go. 
I'm gonna check one more time. I got into the habit of doing it one more time after everyone. So E, a little bit flat. A, doing fine. D, how we doing? Gotta twist that a little because I saw it go out a tiny bit. G for grand. B, and there's E. And there we go. We're back in tune. I would recommend every time you pick up the guitar at first, just make sure it's in tune, obviously. I tune to a G chord. I tune to G, that was like one of the first chords I learned, so that's purely me. Whatever chord you got used to first, um, just play that chord, or better yet, just get the tuner on and just make sure each string is in tune. Look for apps, of course there's apps for everything nowadays. Um, there's an app for tuning your guitar. Whether you use an app or whether you use like a little clip-on tuner that I've got here, this is from F-Zone. I've had this for years, still works like a charm. It's just a case of getting used to tuning it and just getting used to how it sounds in tune. You may not be able to register it pitch perfect, but you can tell when it's in tune. That's when you know your ears are getting better. So the first thing you'll notice about tab is it looks as if it's written upside down, but you can easily think around this. How I think of it is that the lowest written string is the lowest sounding string. In this case, the low E string. Likewise, the highest written string is the high E string, the highest sounding string. The other thing to know about tablature is the numbers and what they indicate, and it's very, very simple again. So the numbers indicate what fret we're supposed to play. And simply, the frets are these little boxes spread across the guitar neck and such. So it's very simple, it goes up numerically. So the open string will literally be written as zero on tablature, whereas the first fret will simply be one. So that's gonna be fret number one on the low E string, fret number one on the A string, D string, G string, etc., etc. So it literally goes up one, first fret, second fret, third fret, etc., etc. So if the numbers are vertical on top of one another, that means you play those notes together, i.e., here's an A minor chord. And they will be stacked one on top of each other, like in the tab provided. However, if the tabs, if the numbers are following one after the other, that means you play them in the order written, i.e. like this. So here we are with our first couple of chords. I'm going to teach you four chords in this lesson. Don't say I don't spoil you. The first chord I'm going to teach you is called A minor. And this one, we're going to have our first open string. And it's going to be the A. We're not going to play the low E. Uh, we're going to start with an open A string. And we're going to put our second finger on the second fret of the D string. Our third finger on the second fret, just below that one. But this one's going to go on the G string. And our first finger on the first fret of the B string. And if you can see, I've got a tiny little gap between that finger and the open A. Because we are going to play that high, high E string. So it's open A, down to the D, G, B, and the open E string. With each chord, um, when you're starting off, you wanna make sure the chord's as coherent as possible so each string is ringing as it's supposed to. So just pluck each string individually at first. Because all it takes is for the tiniest bit of uh, flesh from your skin to and that that high E won't ring properly. See, like, so you wanna, I'd, I'd suggest, when you're starting off with chords, when you make the shape, pluck each string individually at first. And that's A minor. You might notice also I've got my thumb uh, looped over and it's just covering, like I said, all it takes is the tiniest bit of flesh and that string won't, just in, in case should I ring that low E string. In which case, if you're just that focused and you don't have the thumb over it at the moment, uh, just uh, make sure you're only plucking it from the A string. Okay, the next chord we're going to go over is very simple. If you can do the A minor, it's 
called C major. And why that's simple is because all we've done, here's A minor, and here's C major. So all I've done is move the third finger from the second fret on the G to the third fret on the A. And it's just like A minor, we're not going to play the low E. We're going to start from the A, pluck the same strings, A, D, G, B and E, and let them ring. So that's the third fret on the A string, second fret on the D string, this one has an open G string, first fret on the B string, and an open E string. So if you see there, just make sure you've got them little tunnels between just below where the open string, or just above where the open string needs to be. It'll, it might take a bit of practice, but it's completely normal. Some people get it right away, other people it, they need to work on adjusting their fingers. It's nothing to be ashamed of if you're the latter. Just just keep at it and it will it will happen. The next chord we've got is we're only gonna play the high four strings, so that's D, G, B, and A. And we're gonna play D major. Okay? So I'm gonna start with an open D string. I'm gonna put my first finger on the second fret of the G string. My third finger on the third fret of the B string and my second finger, my middle finger on the second fret of the high E string and I'm going to pluck those f high four strings D, G, B and E and that's D major Okay, so our last chord we're going to go over, it's going to involve all four fingers and it's going to involve all six strings. That intimidates a lot of people when I start teaching them guitar, but do not be, don't let that get to you. It's, it's, with practice, you can do it. It might be a bit daunting at first, but just give it a try, for me, above everything else. And this is G major. And that's a nice full chord, because we've got all six strings. Nice shimmery chord. Okay? Okay, so if you look closely, or on the tab provided, we're playing the third fret across three strings, and we've got two open strings. So this is a little easier than it might look at first. And our middle finger, we're going to start on the third fret of the low E, followed by our first finger on the second fret of the A string. And then we've got, you want to make sure you're making those, that little tunnel with those two fingers because we are about to play two open strings on the D and the G. And now on the high B and E strings, we're going to play the third fret with our third finger on the B string, third fret, and our little finger on the third fret of the high E string. And all together that's... And that's G major. And I taught you those four chords in particular because I'm going to take you through your first song. And it is Knocking on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan. An instant classic and remarkably easy to play. And as you can see from the chord chart provided, the first chord we start on is G. And then we go to D. And then A minor. But we play A minor twice as long as we do G and D. Then we go back to G to D and then C major but we play C major twice as long as we did G major or D major so they have one bar of G one two one bar of D one two and then two bars of A minor one two I can't use it anymore 
anymore It's getting dark, too dark to see Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door And even the chorus is the same Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door And I stop there in particular because it is that simple. It's that cycle repeated over and over again. And that's it, you can play your first song, get used to the chords. Like I said, at first pluck each string individually, just to make sure they're all ringing as they should. And soon you'll be able to play that song all the way through, no worries. And with that, we are done. Congratulations on learning your first song. I do hope you put up with it. Keep pushing yourself, keep learning. Maybe subscribe to the channel, I may be putting more lessons up. Thank you very much for your time. Please stay safe during COVID. If you fancy a guitar lesson in the meantime, or a jam, get in touch, let's see what we can do. I'm Callum Carty, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.